All right, so I got the rod out, and it has been to the machine shop, and it was larger in diameter, so it's a little bit smaller in diameter now. And these dark mocks right here, the machine shop guy said, well, as he was working his way down, it began to, his bit, what did he do? He said he traveled on him a little tiny bit, so it's ever so slightly too narrow here, here, and there, but it's not bad. And for what I'm going to use it for, it's fine. And, uh, well, obviously, I mean, what am I going to do if I went out and I bought this to go with this? Uh, well, these guys right here, they don't work, so it's going to be one of these. So I'm going to turn it into a threaded rod. So you know what I'm going to do with it, right? Got it all figured out. Well, let's see if it works. Central Machinery, Harbor Freight, and this is just like, it's really cool. I do a lot of stuff with Dremel, which is, you know, a fair amount of what I just did with that little project was Dremeling. But this is just fantastic. Uh, base price is about $22. With tax for me, it was $24.50 or something like that. But it's got a nice little notch. You can drop it down in, take it there, spin it. The entire body will rotate. Stuff like that, bring it up, lock it in place by just simply putting it somewhere on a nice flat surface, clicking it over, and uh, it looks like it's kind of flimsy down in here. But once you get this collar both you know, locked in place, you know, bang, it's 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 darn tight. Let me tighten it back up again. You get it there, and it's pretty solidly locked in. So I thought I just this is just really cool. I thought I'd throw that in. All right, I got a bit more work to do there, but they're getting a bit, uh, it's all getting a bit closer here. But they're almost done. This is just a set. The other set's still a little bit rough. I got a little bit more work to do on those. It's getting closer. All right, I dremeled some slots in there for a screwdriver, and those are ready to be installed. All right, I got to get in here and, um, Pop the arm off there. Actually, there's a rocker shaft, and all the arms have got to come off. Let me get to that. Look at that. It's not quite as clean as I like to see it. Must be about time for an oil change, too. It looks like I might ever so slightly be getting a little tiny bit of wear on that one. That one doesn't look bad. This guy's okay. That guy's okay. Interesting, interesting. And you can see it down here on these guys. This one right there has got, it's hard to see, but it's got a slightly bigger wear pattern than the other ones. Interesting. So with these hydraulic systems, they pretty much you set it up when you build the motor, and uh, there's not a lot of stuff that you do with it after that, so... What I really need to keep track of now is like how much of the screw sticks out above this particular sort of flat area. So I've got those dimensions up here for each of these. Yeah, just all I got to do then is just unscrew them, pop the new ones in, and make sure that the numbers are all pretty close to that right there. All right, I've remeasured. And come up with the following. So they're pretty close to where they used to be. It doesn't really matter because hey, they're hydraulic lifters. They're in the ballpark. Anyway, I got to go give them a little tiny bit of uh, final torque once they get them in the car because it's kind of hard to hold it steady when I'm just sitting here on a, you know, on a towel. There may be just a little bit of valve train clatter when I fire it up here, but let's see what happens. Make sure I'm in neutral. Let's give it just a hint of gas. There we go. 
Okay, having installed those things, you're like, why in the world would you do something like that? Well, it kind of comes down to this particular formula right here, sliding friction. And if you've watched my videos before, I went into this sliding friction thing on those swivel foot adjusters. And, uh, you know, if you're sho shoving steel against steel, you don't get to impact that little value right there. This is the coefficient of friction. So you've got steel on steel. It's got a particular friction. You put a... You know, it doesn't matter whether it's a round ball or whether it's a stock adjuster, it's still steel on steel. You're pretty much done with it right there. Now, I don't actually have steel on steel anymore since I've replaced some of them. So why would I do that? Well, during wear, when there's absolutely no lubricant present, the frictional coefficient may range from 0.12 to as high as 0.18 to 0.3. And this is for bronze on steel. Uh, nice little reference right here. It's like the most consolidated thing I've been able to find. And then we continue. By comparison, the coefficient of friction during wear for, skip the aluminum part, for steel on steel is 1. So since I'm doing bearing bronze specifically, uh, the bearing bronze that I chose, I've mentioned this in one of my earlier videos, is 932 bearing bronze. Uh, it's got a, bit, a fair amount of lead in it. Apparently the lead is what causes it to have the low coefficient of friction. So you don't get that in steels. But anyway, the question is, what makes me think that I can actually re replace a steel screw with a bronze screw? Tensile strength, yield strength, 35,000, 20,000, 6958. This is from the same manufacturer. I thought I'd use the same company to provide us with some numbers. Uh, what matters to me is the yield strength, 58,000 to about 20,000. So it's about one-third the strength of the steel that was in there. But the only part of the strength that you're really needing is when you go and torque the screw down. So the outside nut and the actual uh, rock arm itself, of course, are made out of steel. So you're sitting there torquing onto this thing that is designed to be a piece of steel. So you got to be really careful with the torque when you do it. You just can't get in there and wrench the crap out of it or you'll strip the threads. But uh, I was pretty careful and I'm pretty sure it's going to stay in place. And, and survive. There's a bunch of other material properties involving bronze and steel comparisons that I went through and I'm like, yeah, this should work just fine. Uh, but ultimately we go back to that formula right there and I'd like to, it's not just that it should save some power, wouldn't you like to have some idea of how much it's going to save you? And to do that we have to start getting into the geometry of the system itself. And it is in fact actually geometry and trigonometry. As you can see by these formulas with sines and cosines. So if you come down here, what we've got down at this end is basically the push rod is going to be pushing a 125. I have a 125 rocker on my car or a stocker. Okay. This is what the uh, actual adjusting screw uh, travels through, the arc that it would travel if you just kept spinning this thing. But anyway, I can take the, uh, the cam. And I've got my cam set up to about stock, so it's about uh, you know, 4.1 millimeters down versus 4.1 millimeters up for a total of about 8.2 millimeters of travel. It's about right. But anyway, we can run it up and down, and we just go ahead and play it. So that's what it does is it bounces back and forth. Gives you some idea of what's happening. Now, what I need are these numbers up here. So let's put it at like peak lift, and that number is 31,827. Let's put it at half lift. There's half lift. And if you subtract those two numbers from each other, let's go to the spreadsheet because, hey, you know, I haven't done a spreadsheet in a while. Let's, here we are at the spreadsheet, and that number ends up being that value right there. So every quarter of an arc 
ends up being that much. Uh, we need to convert the millimeters into inches, so we've got a conversion factor. We need to take the inches then to feet so we can ultimately get the foot pounds. That's that one right there. Uh, it's swinging through that quarter arc obviously four times, so you have to multiply the value by four to get that. There are eight valves in the motor, so we have to multiply it by eight. It's a two stroke motor, so we divide by two. And ultimately, uh, I like to drive at about 3,200 RPMs when booking down the road at 65 or so. So that gets me to this many feet of swept out arc in a minute. Uh, the valve spring, roughly 140 pounds or so by the time you've compressed it. And it's going through the motions. It does not include the dynamic loads, which increase that value. So this number right there is conservative. I then need to take it and figure out what uh, that coefficient of friction force is. Uh, let's see, they told us that it was about a 1, so this is going to be like the worst you could possibly do is about a 1. So that tells you that in the stock system, if the coefficient of friction is 1, that it's pissing away 0.356 horsepower. But that's not what's crucial. What's crucial is how much can I save? So we come down here and we say there's 0.2 at that coefficient of friction, which means that uh, we get to reduce the force by a fair amount, and it ends up giving us 0.071 horsepower, giving us a difference if this coefficient of friction is 1 and this one is 2. That means that what I've done by installing those bronze adjusters is to save myself 0.285 horsepower, which isn't bad. Uh, I think that this number is actually a bit harsh. I've seen an awful lot of stuff that says that it's about 0.8. Stainless steel is not a particularly friction smooth type steel, so it's it's not the best in the world. So this number should be fairly high. And uh, this number down here, 0.2, remember the, uh, the little blurb that I found said it was anywhere from 0 0.2, 0 0.12 to 0.18. So maybe let's try like 0.18 or something in there. So what that gives us then is a difference at this point of about 0.22 horsepower. And if you've watched my video on how much horsepower it takes to shove a beetle down the road, it's between 22 and 23 horsepower, which means that value right there is about 1% of what it takes to send a beetle down the road. Now, 1% is most likely not ever going to be measurable if you actually did some kind of an experiment, but it is clearly a calculatable benefit. And it is without a doubt in there and providing a benefit, which means it's better than H-beam rods, it's better than serpentine belts. What else can I come up with? What else is it better than? Oh yeah, swivel foot adjusters. There you go, three things that it's better at. Because I can measure, no, none of these things are gonna provide you really a measurable benefit, but at least I can calculate what that one is right there. Now, if you wanna do this yourself, I would advise against doing it. Uh, I've got hydraulics, which means that my adjusters are not pounding into the end of my valve. If you've got uh, standards where you're slipping your old uh, feeler gauge in there, your system is pounding. I'm not sure about the malleability of uh, the bronze versus the steel. Um, the bronze is supposed to be pretty tough, and this is an application that it's designed for and bearing, but I don't know if it's designed to be bearing plus pounding. So. If you do it, uh, you're kind of on your own as far as that goes, but uh, I would suggest waiting for me to get some miles on my car. I've got some trips planned, so I'll get there eventually. I'm just kind of throwing it out there right now. This is what I've been working on on my car, and uh, it's been a fun little project. It's in there. I've got like 16 miles on it, but that's not enough to really know whether or not it's working. But I'll get to it, and I'll get back to this later.